Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great and for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris. Today we're going to continue on with our VGC Series 9 content and we've got a very special team to feature today. So this team comes from two players, from Will Monkey VGC and from Rob Deshu RM. Um, you can find both of their Twitter links down in the description below. This is one of the teams that had a very strong run in the recent Smogon VGC tournament. Uh, finished in the top 16. Monkey and VGC went 10-1 with the team, 10-0 on Swiss, which is just incredible. So massive props to them. But um, I actually stumbled across this team from Addy's uh, YouTube channel. He did a, a little interview podcast thing with the, with Rob and Will uh, on the team. It's amazing. Um, I'll link Addy's YouTube down below. He does amazing VG content. You've got to check him out if you haven't already. Um, but yeah, this team he did a, a whole episode on and uh, I was just encapsulated the whole time. I love the build. I love the, the ideology behind the team and how it functions. And I thought it would be really good to bring it onto the channel today to um, kind of showcase for you guys that maybe haven't seen it already and uh, just give it kind of a run out because I think there's a lot of kind of warrant, especially at the minute in the format with how good it kind of runs. Uh, we've got the pranks that thunder us. We've been caught ourselves a few times kind of against teams where we thought I had to define one then turns out to be the prankster one so it works quite well in this team obviously with a lot of physical kind of threats here you got the crit kiss which is always a favorite of mine Cortana uh, another big powerhouse as well provides a really good kind of utility in the team you've got the rapid strike Urshifu Garchomp I mean Garchomp's usage at the minute in the format really is amazing and kind of just soaring but you can see here that and, and an interesting point that they wanted the dragon claw on here over sword stance was a think is a quite a nice option as well helps out with like colossal dragapult stuff where you can lead the garchomp and thunderous hopefully we come across that today and then the incineral there with the safety goggles kind of gives you that nice uh support option with the pivot and uh, also kind of create and helps board positions and things like that so as always we'll have a couple of games with the team today it's going to be a lot of fun. Hope you guys enjoy it. Definitely, if you've tried this team or if you've played this team, uh, leave your comments down below. Let me know your thoughts on today's build. And uh, again, if you've got rental teams you'd like to see featured uh, over the next couple of couple of weeks let me know drop them down in the comment section and we'll get through them as soon as we can so without further ado friends let's get into our first one of today okay first up today we have a Weezen, Reggie Gigas, Venusaur Torkoal, Reggie Alecki and Urshifu team so got that classic kind of uh, Reggie Gigas Weezen combination here which is always threatening in this format with the neutralizing gash and down our abilities and everything like that making it very difficult for us to kind of perform and uh, get going with our team uh garchomp obviously kind of stands out first and foremost it does super well against uh clearing the field from the wheezing getting rid of that neutralizing gas which is one of the biggest things uh that we want to try and do uh, as soon as possible if we see that kind of lead it also helps out against the reggie Alecki and doesn't do too bad against the sun core as well you know um so the one thing that you would say is you don't want to leave like garchomp vulnerable against reggie gigas um just because of the fact that they're likely going to be um, able to hit us with like uh, Ice Punch or Max Hailstorm um, and reduce our speed as well. So, you know, the, the, the kind of the big thing for us here is like obviously redirection kiss gives us a lot of kind of leeway here. Um, Thunderous with its defiant uh, of its prankster, sorry, doesn't really help out too much because it obviously lose the prankster. It can be very useful. Um, Incineroar going to be useful against the Venu Torkoal lead. And I think we'll round off with Urshifu. Yeah. Can be a little bit tricky, of course, with Urshifu, uh, especially with the Venusaur. Uh, if we do see that, and it is the, the max mon of choice for my opponent, if they go for something like G-Max Vinelash, break the, the, the Sash there, um, and then Regilecki becomes a little bit more of an issue, of course, especially with the Sun up as well. It means that our... Um, Surgeon strikes aren't going to be hitting as hard, but we do see the uh, the Gigas and the Weezing. So, yeah, it is tricky because, like, we can max. We can go for a max quick. Problem is, <clears throat> we could even bait them in and maybe switch into an Incineral and max kiss, but then... It gets a bit tricky. Like, are we going to see the Weezing go for the taunt here into the Togekiss? 
Probably not. I think the Weezen definitely protects this turn. Makes sense to go for the Wormwind. We reduce the attack power on the Regigigas. Um, and then just go for Follow Me. It makes it slightly more difficult the next turn because obviously we're still... If they remove the Togekiss here this turn, then we're, we're kind of back in the same position as we would have been the turn before. But let's hope that we can... Uh, we can kiss can survive this turn because that's kind of the big thing for us here um and it's always difficult you know when you're playing a, like a new team or a team that someone's built and not knowing the cocks like um like off the top of your head now i can take a quick look of the the poker piss and have a look now this kiss is not massively defensive um so if we see i think anything that coming out from the reggie Gigas here is probably going to be able to take us down and the, the problem is the the wheezing probably does protect you've got to think yeah because of the threat of the max quake there it's far too much now can a minus one uh attack drop onto the the regigigas kind of help us out we do get the the max worm off first which is always useful so that minus one will be super nice because it it gives togekiss a little bit of a better chance but it depends on what we see it's max strike obviously it makes things a little bit more complicated because our speeds drop um and if it's max hailstorm like we see we are going to be able to take this with the kiss Ooh, just about there we go there's some nice ev in for you so now the wheezing in a really horrible position because um even if it was sashed like i don't expect it is it's probably sugar berry um we do have the opportunity now where we can go for um oh, we do survive just the buffer uh we can go for a max quake but it's likely shucker so we'll probably want to pick up the knockout there which is a little bit um not ideal like another max wormwind is probably a better play uh and take the the, the gigas down to minus two um and then go for the follow me again just to draw in an attack from the reggie gigas and then the next turn we can potentially max guard uh, stall out the last turn of the max turns um, and Regigigas doesn't become as much of a threat going forward so um, yeah I, th I feel like we get more out of our turn going for the Wormwind here and this is why it's such a nice option on Garchomp you know you get the stab uh, you're lowering an attack on the opposing Pokemon it's a really nice option um, and we kind of get around the potential berry that's there as we see another max hailstorm come out yeah they're kind of locking into that for the fact that you know they the, you know the max strike would make sense here uh which i would imagine we'll probably see the the next turn and sludge bomb not really going to do too much um from the wheezing so everything taking a round of hill damage what can we mm, urshifu aqua jet would get rid of the wheezing yeah and then garchomp would be able to just go for another worm wind into the Regigigas and the Weezing can't protect which is the nice thing with Urshifu here you know um, so we can definitely remove it um, do you want the special defense boost as well that's another question because I think when you look at like the makeup of my opponent's team got a lot of special attackers I mean they've got the Urshifu as well of course but like predominantly the rest of the team that potentially are in the back are going to be special attackers so I think the Max Quake there which should Pick up the knockout. Should pick up the knockout. Yeah, we can go for that protect. So, yeah. You can't protect in front of an Urshifu, though. Oh, you can! It's just that uh, we messed up big style. But it doesn't matter anyway. We get the max quake off first anyway, so it's fine. Uh, hopefully this takes it down. What oh, doesn't just misses, but they are minus two. So we've messed up a little bit. I always thought that uh, Unseen Fist... Oh, of course. We don't have an ability. Why am I being so, so dumb about this? <laughs> I can't believe I've just, yeah, we hit through, but yeah, we don't. We don't actually do that because there is no abilities with neutralizing gas on the field. But the Regigig is going down anyway to recall damage. We do man manage to survive the uh, the Max Hailstorm, uh, even though we are uh, four times a week to it. I need to wake up a little bit, I think, this morning. But here we go. Okay. So that, that pairing's gone. See so what comes in. Is it going to be the Venu Torkoal or is it going to be Reggie, Aleki, and Urshifu? Torkoal and Venu, I reckon. 
Oh no, Tokol and Aleki. Okay. Well, Aleki's probably got Hyper Beam. You would imagine, anyway. Um, but we can potentially just go for an Earthquake here. See if we can get it off with, with Chomp. Um, if we can, it gets rid of, like, Reggie Aleki. And does a nice chunk of damage to um, the Torkoal as well at the same time. But we've got to kind of hope that the Aleki hasn't got away to hit the Garchomp. But, you know, I won't hold my breath on that. Because I think more commonly now we are seeing Alekis with that kind of third attacking option. Where they've got like something like Hyper Beam, even Extreme Speed. Other options just to get some chip on uh, to opposing ground types that they're kind of otherwise kind of knackered against. So... Uh, no options there. We just see the Thunderbolt come out into Urshifu. Gotcha, I'm going to be able to get this Earthquake off. We probably go down to the Life Orb Recoil. Um, so knock ourselves out. But at, at the same time, we get the Aleki. So that's nice. It's always nice. And um, Torkoal kind of a sitting duck. So we are going to be able to pick up a win uh, this, this first time out with the team, which is always good. It's a bit... Uh, it's not like super clean. Um, but at the same time, you can see how the team really functions super well um, and has the tools to kind of overcome even some of the more really kind of potent, horrible, nasty teams that you're going to face, uh, especially in best of one on the ladder. And it can kind of really handle those sort of things pretty well. And we've got that easy fake out here and then just the, the surge and strikes just to pick up the knockout onto the Torkoal. So it's a nice clean win. And the team doing really well early on, you know. Um, and this is one of the reasons I think the team's got a lot like this particular team um, really stands out to me a lot from like other teams that we've played because I think just the the kind of flexibility in leads and kind of modes that you've got within the team are just so much more than what your kind of general teams that you're seeing. It's a real good stuff sort of team. I really do love it for that reason. So good game to our opponent from our first match. And uh, without further ado, friends, we'll jump into our second one of today's episode. Okay, next up today, we have a Terrakion, Porygon Z, Whimsicott, Metagross, Zapdos, and Tapu Fini. So it's kind of like on one side of the team, you've got a really like kind of common solid mode to the team with the Metagross, Zapdos, and the Tapu Fini. And on the other side of the team, you've got kind of like something that you don't see too often, but something that can really be very good and threatening on uh, the ladder, especially best of one with the Whimsicott, uh, Terrakion, and the Porygon Z, especially with the beat up combination there with the Whimsicott onto the Terrakion, and then that. It, initial tailwind mod um and and just getting that that porygon z in an amazing position to kind of set up right well i think incineroar helps us out a bunch uh just for the fake out pressure onto the at least the whimsicott you know crit kiss is something i do like here but like the the Trakian, the zapdos metagross give us all a really hard time um Urshifu is not bad. It gets around Protect and things like that, especially against the, the P2 and the Terrakion. And I guess if we lead that, then we won't go jump in the back. It gives us a little bit of stability against something like the Zapdos. And maybe Cortana is kind of a last kind of mod to bring. Thunderous, can we bring it here? I mean, Thunderous is really good here, to be honest, because I think outside of really the Terrakion, like the Eerie Impulse is really good. So... It's maybe something I've kind of overlooked a little bit because it just shuts down stuff like Zapdos, stuff like Finny, stuff like PZ as well. Uh, regretting not bringing it, but I mean, at the same time, I think the Pokemon that we have brought will do a job for us uh, against what my opponent's planning to do. So, uh, Zapdos, Wimmy coming out. Yeah, and we're going to see that Tailwind mode for sure. Um, I know Shifu. Not in the best of spots right now. Um, but again, you know, the, the thing is, like, we've got the parting shot into the Zapdos. Um, and we can just switch straight into Garchomp. And, and potentially bait my opponent into going for that, like, max uh, lightning. Uh, the thing is, obviously, we've got to be very careful around something like the Whimsicott as well. Because it does have access to Moonblast. Uh, can hit the Garchomp for good damage. So, we can't get Garchomp in and just kind of feel like we've got a kind of a free run with it. You know, we've got to kind of manage um, the Wimmy at the same time. But, you know, if we get this first turn where they, they max, they click in, where's the max move into the Urshifu slot, that would be amazing. 
the issue would be the safe play for my opponent here is just go for the, the max airstream into the Urshifu. I'm hoping that because they've got potentially Tailwind here, they don't necessarily need to go for that play. Ooh, okay. That's not ideal. That is really not ideal. Baiting us in. Okay, and there's a the Thunderbolt, which we do kind of take. But, I mean, at the same time, it's not great. We don't want to really be taking the... Um, the Dazzling Gleam onto Garchomp. That's too much damage really for us to be kind of contending with. Uh, Cartana makes a lot of sense. Just for the fact that the, the next turn we can kind of bait in the Heat Wave. Get Incineroar back onto the field. Um, and I think we're probably better off. I mean we can max Garchomp here. It is a turn where we could max Garchomp. Um... And go max rockfall into the into the Zapdos. We're gonna take a dazzle though at the same time, which isn't great, but we have a free next turn because of the fake out. So I'm kinda tempted to just take an opportunity here. Max Garchomp when we got the opportunity now. Uh, it's just difficult because we've taken so much damage with the the, the um the dazzling gleam, but we may see something like a tailwind heat wave here, which Again, would free up a little bit of room for Garchomp to kind of nail down the Zapdos. And then it makes it a lot easier for Cortana to kind of perform in the rest of this game. So, doesn't look... Well, I say it doesn't look like the Zapdos is going to max, but it always max after Garchomp. So. Let's see. Let's see. We're going to take a hefty bit of damage from this Dazzle game regardless if we do see that here. Zapdos going for the max. got to go max flare because you've got to be worried about cartana i think i think the makeup of my opponent's team like cartana does so well against so many of the pokemon my opponent has you know um let's see if they fall for this bait maybe not again we'll see another dozen gleam no speed control and there's a max rock fall how much are we gonna do It's a fair amount, you know. Uh, they are minus one as well, so you've got, you've got to keep that in mind. Whimsicott Sash is going to be broken now, so we can go after that the next turn, especially if you don't see any, yeah, speed control here. So, yeah. So, yeah, I think we take this next turn to, to kind of deal with the Whimsicott. Um, this is... Yeah. What we need to get rid of it. We need to remove it from the field. So fake out. Is Max Rockfall going to be enough? Hopefully it is. You know. Hopefully if it's very close, the residual damage takes it down. That would be my thinking. Yeah. Okay. And then the Zapdos probably Max Airstream. I think into Garchomp, which is still not the worst. You know. Um. Yeah, it does take us down, unfortunately. Which isn't brilliant, but it's not its not the worst. And they do get the speed boost. Uh, now it's a little tricky. Now it's a little tricky. It's a little trickier. Because obviously Cartana. Uh, I don't know if an Aqua Jet would be enough to get the Zapdos. But I guess we can protect. We can protect with Urshifu. And just utilize like Incineroar here to go for... Um, Flare Blitz, which would be enough to get the Zapdos, I think, and then PZ. Yeah, PZ makes it a lot more tricky. Thing is, though, they have to double into Urshifu here because they really need the PZ to, to outspeed Urshifu because of the Sash. Um, so they have to Airstream and then they have to double up into it, which might create enough room for something like then Cartana to come in and kind of clean up right let's see what the what potentially could they have yeah i mean this is actually all right this is all right i think what we'll do is we'll go we'll go flare blitz and we'll go close combat yeah and if they double up into urshifu then that's fine we still got cartana to come in and i i feel like cartana can still do a job for us so yeah 
the worst case scenario here is that they go hyper beam into um incineral and that kind of stops incineral being able to um oh Ooh. okay <laughs> E that the, the IVs, EVs on this team, IVs. What am I talking about? IVs for EVs on this team are, are perfection, I will say. So the Thunderbolt, um, yeah. I mean, it's going to be Cartana versus the world now, but the world is only one Pokemon on my opponent's side of the field, so it's not too bad. Uh, we'll go down to the the yeah the residual damage and the chip damage here. I still think Hyper Beam would have been the better play from P two. Um, just to guarantee that knockout. Cortana. And it's either going to be like Tapu Fini, uh, Metagross. Okay, Metagross. I think we'll be alright. I think we should be alright. We've already got Leaf Blade, Sacred Sword, Smart Strike, Aerial Ace. So, Sacred Sword is going to be our best option. I can't see them having like something like, oh, Metagross doesn't even get Fire Punch, does it? So, it's going to have Ice Punch. Probably its best option. Stomp and Tantrum, maybe. Ice Punch. Yeah. Ooh, it's going to be very close. It looks like they're kind of out damaging us, to be honest. But because of our speed kind of advantage, that might just give us the edge to kind of close this one up. Uh, can we take one more after this? Yeah, we're going to be able to. Yeah, yeah, one more. We're going we're to be able to do this. We're going to be able to do this with Cartana. Cartana going to be able to close this one out. Hopefully. Yeah, one more Sacred Sword. I'll get it. As long as we take this Ice Punch, we're all right. Sandstorm subsides. And then one more. I mean, both games have been pretty tight. And really down to the wire. And this is why I kind of like really hailed the uh, EV spreads that we've got. Metagross just stolen out. Stolen out. Trying to uh, PP waste these sacred swords it's gonna be a long stall out um but yeah the evs have been really clutch you've seen like a couple of games here today where we've we've had those really clutch survivals and maybe they are damage rolls you know um but it will go in your favor sometimes you've got to put the evs in there initially to have those damage rolls to exist so cannot complain one little bit really good games of the team today has performed amazingly well and um these are like my i haven't practiced with the team beforehand so i've literally come into this like one of you picking up the team and making yourself more familiar with the team let's say um so you know you've got to do that you're gonna to have to play with it a lot figure out the modes and stuff like that and even in that last match even though we come out on the better side of it we got the the big the w but you know i still think the thunderous could have done a job there for us it would have made it easier to kind of slow down the zapdos from the start it would have been it would have been easier to deal with the uh the the, the whimsicott as well really slow that down and i think that would have freed up garchomp to have a way easier time to kind of close that match out um and then allow other things like Urshifu, Cartana, a bit more room to kind of function at the end of the game. So there are different mods there that we haven't really explored today. But that's that's down to you guys now if you want to try the team out. And I definitely would recommend suggesting it. I think it's one of the more solid cores that we've seen uh, built in this format. And I, I really do love the team. So with that, friends, let's hop over now and uh, remind you of the rental code for today's team. <laughs> Okay, friends, here is today's rental team. A big shout out to uh, Monkey VGC, to Deshu, and uh, obviously, of course, to Addy as well for uh, making me aware of this team in the first place for the amazing content that he does. But um, Will and Rob doing an incredible job with this team, putting it together. So massive shout out to both of them. And um, it's been a lot of fun playing it today. So if you do try the team out, let me know down in the comment section below. Let me know your thoughts. I th as I say, I've said it throughout this, this episode. I think it's one of the, the best teams most solid rounded teams that I've kind of come across in the format uh, that can deal with a lot of the big threats at the minute. Definitely check out Addy's episode on this team as well and you can get a few more insights from Will and Rob on the team which is just really interesting if you're into that sort of thing. So hopefully you enjoyed today's episode. Thank you as always friends for tuning in. Uh, we'll be back later in the week. We've got lots planned this week. We've got the X9 Draft League stuff coming out so I'll be doing an analysis of my team, doing a run up of my first match and uh, I'm going to try and do an overall analysis thought video on everyone's teams uh, of the X9 League because there's some incredible teams that we've seen in the draft uh, as it's kind of 
formed and come together before we kind of kick off uh, with round one. So lots to look forward to and um, we'll be back very soon. Take care of yourselves. That's the most important thing. And I'll see you all for another episode very soon. So until then, friends, take care and bye-bye.